Hello friends and welcome to Troidal Power Presents the Power Playthroughs Project with Troidal Power. I am your host Troidal Power. This is the podcast where we play games in a powerful way. And today we're checking out a little bit of a Retro Machina um, from Super.com, or published by Super.com, developed by Orbit Studio. Um, thank you to Super.com for providing a, uh, a copy of this for me to review here uh, on, on the Troidal Power Presents Power Playthroughs Project with Troidal Power, and potentially over on Geek2GeekMedia.com if we end up doing a full-on review. Um, I, this is an adventure game of sorts, is pretty much all I know about it. Uh, we're looking at a very, um, oh gosh, what's the, the style called that the Batman animated series is it, um, Wow, my brain is shut down. Uh, what, what's where the, the letters are really thin and there's lots of black and gold. Batman animated series. Art Nouveau? No. Art style. What's it called? Uh, 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 uh. What's, what's, what's it called? Nor aesthetic? No. What's, what's, uh, God, uh, not gothic, um, I don't know. The letters are thin, and they've got a lot of pointed edges, and they look like it's like an outline, and then the, the letters inside of it are recessed. Anyway, we're going to go to options. What the heck is it called? Options. Controls, vibration on. I'm using a 8 Do Pro 2 controller. I don't know if it actually has vibrations, but I guess we'll find out. Um, and then in our other our other options there were volumes and language, which we want to leave all where it was. So we'll hit new game. Art Deco, Art Deco. It has a very Art Deco style to the font and the city in the background, which we're now seeing in the cutscene here, pan through the city. It's very golden and there's a butterfly flying up. Uh, that's very, very pretty blue butterfly flying over um, some factory lines where it looks like there's some robots building uh, other robots, maybe? Building some sort of machines, building cash registers, maybe? The butterfly lands, and one of the robots is looking at the butterfly, and there's like an error alert on a screen next to them because they're not doing their job, and now alarms are starting to go off because this robot's not doing their job. And a big purple screen pops up out of the ground and says, system corruption identified in unit something initiating recycling procedure. Move the robot using the left stick. Okay, we're running around as our robot. Everything looks like it's like hand drawn in this style. I like it a lot. Um, we're running away from this big purple screen, I guess. And there's a red laser here. Let's wait for it to go off and then cross it. Okay. Um, Immediately, the thing, oh, return to your position, unit SV5893. Immediately, the thing that popped to mind, uh, press A, dodge. Okay, I can roll through these. Um, is, I'm sure, not a good comparison, but it made, immediately made me think of the uh, Oddworld games. Unit SV5893, your memory must be erased in order to ensure continued functionality. Obey our commands, something. Press Y to attack. Oh, I can I can punch apart these test tube things that I stuck behind. And he pulls out a wrench to, to hit things. He's a little droid. He kind of looks like Ratchet from the Ratchet and Clank games. He's a, a little droid with arms and legs and two big yellow eyes and a blue gooey thing in the middle of his chest. And maybe a backpack and a wrench. We're now outside running across the skyway and there's big like tank robots following us. Unit SV5893, your memory must be erased in order to ensure continued functionality. Obey our commands and return to your position. And instead we see him dropping through like a pneumatic tube. Oh, into a junk pile, maybe? He's sealed in a ball now by some cybernetic arms who pick him up and move it along. Uh, is he going to end up in a gotcha machine? Nope, he's ending up in a cannon. Fires him out across the city. Okay. There, There's that ball flying out. Oh, it flew out through a hole in the city. The city's in a dome. He's flying out into the sky outside the dome. He flew through a cloud. Um, looks like the city's way in the distance floating in the air there, like Cloud City, but with a dome on it. And there's trees in the foreground, leaves blowing through the air, and crash! There's our, our, our little, our little robosphere. It's broken open. Our, our little robot man stands up, and it says, checking integrity, uh, checking integrity of mechanical systems. 
Propulsion module damaged. Checking integrity of electronic brain. Warning, system corruption level at 10%. Updating primary routine. Main routine, restore system integrity and fix malfunctions. Return to endeavor. All right, so that's what we need to do, I think. Uh, gold, return to endeavor. There's a whole bunch of canisters around here, so we're just gonna bash them up real good, real quick. Bash and bash and bash in. We're collecting gears, it looks like, in the corner. Uh, we're at 50 of them so far. Up in the top left, I've got a little picture of my dude, and next to him it says 100s out of 100, and then there are five dots below that, which either of those could be health indicators, I'm not sure. Um, we're now up to 93 little gears, 96, and we're now at 100. And one, and we've broken all the things. So we're moving on here. We're like in a, a jungly, foresty area. It looks like there's like a mech thing over in the woods there. That's kind of weird. Nope, oh, went to a loading screen. Big sign says, broken robots, no more. Nucleonics presents the repair machine. With this incredible machine, all the mechanisms can be quickly repaired. Do not waste time. Come and see the amazing world of Nucleonics technologies. Um, and it shows sad robots walking into a machine and then walking away as happy robots. So I guess we're gonna try and go there. Anal anal analyzing object. Identified, fix bot cabin. Primitive device used to repair damaged automatons. Main routine, find a fix bot cabin. All right. Our goal is now to find a fix bot cabin. Breaking some more of those containers open, collecting, I don't know, scraps, gears, whatever it is, we're at 111 of them. Um, oh, there's there's a there's a convertible crashing the water. Oh, there's a little purple droid, a little purple spider droid. It tried to jump at us. I hit it with a wrench. Uh, there's there's a convertible that's like half submerged in water and has grass growing out of it. It's a cool looking convertible. It fits very nicely in the Art Deco style. Okay, I got hit and it said 10 damage, and my the the ten, 100 out of 100 up in the top left corner went down to 90 out of 100, and also. Uh, one half of the five dots that are up next to my picture went down. So it looks like both of those are, in fact, my health. But the good news is when I destroyed another spider bot, uh, I was healed. So we're good. Um, let's see. Unexpected problem. Front passageway blocked. Calculating potential solutions. There's some, uh, like, pylons blocking the path. 2,568 solutions found. Best solution... Use primitive machine to clear passageway. There's a, a spider bot that it's highlighted. Radio frequency module activated. Oh? Can I hack the machines? So, uh, before I do that, one criticism I have of this game so far is that some of the text message boxes, um, like, like the, the, the one at the end of that conversation just hangs there until you move. But the ones mid-conversation advance automatically and they advance a little too quickly. Um, if I wasn't narrating them, it'd probably be okay, but still, that's that's still a little too fast. Okay, press and hold L to activate the radio frequency, release L to release the control beam. So we'll press and hold L and it zapped onto that robot. It's called a Bugtron, serial number BG10. The small spider-shaped robot was used to service hard-to-reach locations at nucleonics facilities by moving through the wall-mounted ventilation ducts. It has become a very popular robot and is mainly used in public areas. Although fragile, it can be dangerous when in a group. And now we have control. Nope, we don't have control. Oh, move the controlled enemy using the right stick. Cool, and so I can move him onto a button, which deactivates the pylon. And then I can use the left stick to move myself and break him. Ha 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 ha. And steal his heart or whatever his gears are. Um, now there's like a fountain here. I should have said at the beginning, this is all in like an isometric view and we're still dealing with like beautifully illustrated hand-drawn uh, looking art pieces here. Oh, hey, and here's the nucleonic facility. So we'll walk in the front door. This game is actually out today as I'm recording it. Um, uh, this podcast episode will probably be out you know what, I might turn around and release it immediately. I don't know when it's gonna come out. But anyway, this game's available when you're hearing this because it's available when I'm recording it. Unless they take it off the shop sometime in the future. Um, we're inside the facility now. 
wandering around. There's a big hole in some stained glass window here. There's a, a robot arm, of like a big robot arm in the water. And I think this is like a security bot thing that just wiggled at me, but it's it's too deactivated to do much. So we'll just push on here and break some more crates. Up to 171 gears. Ooh, it's dark and spooky up in this corner. Some more crates to break. Looks like there's a, ah, oh, there's a lever here. We can press Y to pull, and that's gonna turn on the power. Hey, oh, and it, it, there's a lift in front of me too. Up on the wall, it says 1.21 GW, 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 1.21 gigawatts, or gigawatts, as uh, we like to say in the retro future past. Uh, through a door and into the next room. Some more boxes to break. Another lever to pull. Pull that. And another platform got activated. It's going back and forth here. Hmm. Sorry, I got distracted. All right. So there's a big... Mm, dogs, why are you barking? There's a big gap. We'll step on this platform. It takes us across the gap. And on the other side, there's some more stuff to break. I do appreciate a game that lets me break stuff. Uh, let me go see where my dogs are barking. For no reason at all is why my dogs are barking. Um, let's go up these stairs, and there's a computer terminal here that I don't think I can do anything with. Oh, there's some more boxes to break though. Can do something with those. 237 gears now. Um, oh, a bunch of spider bots fell down in this room. We're in. Let's let's take over. Uh, Nucleonix Pogotron. So I broke all the spider bots, but there was this Pogotron left, which is like a little um, UFO looking robot. <clears throat> Nucleonix used this machine to chop down trees and mine resources for building new robots. Thanks to its rotary saws, it can attack with incredible speed, destroying everything in its path. Its anti gravity system allows it to float over some obstacles, making it a very agile robot. Cool. And now it's a very agile robot that's on my side. Can it float over these pylons? Um, attack with a controlled enemy using... Whoa! The right shoulder lets me attack with a controlled enemy. I wonder if I could have... Let's destroy this guy. Oh, I'm hurting myself. Why am I hurting myself? Ow. Touching it hurts. Oh gosh, it's gonna kill me. I only have five health left. Um... Can I, can I hit it from slightly farther away? Nope, I died. So just hitting it hurts me. Okay, we're gonna try this again. We're immediately gonna see if we can take over the spider bots and use them to kill the saw blade bot. Um, I don't remember what I was musing on. Oh, I think I was musing on if I could take over multiple enemies, which we will find out. So it started us back before that uh, floating platform, break some boxes again. Um, this game's cool. I, I am liking uh, the format of it here. Um, oh, I forgot I've got a dodge thing I can use too. Okay, here's the, all those enemies dropping down. And nope, I just take over one of them. Um, and trying to use it to hit this guy is very difficult. Do I have to just dodge when it's going to use its saw blades? And then hit it? Yeah. So it's, it's exposed for a second after using its saw blades, I see. All right, let's kill this last little spider bot. Um, I, I am, uh, I, I expected more of a slow adventure game. This has a lot more uh, action in it than I was expecting. I thought it was gonna be purely adventure, but there's, there's plenty of action too. Ah, there's a little dispenser that splits out spider drones, which is good because, um, select, whoa. 
I just had some bad slowdown. I don't know if that was me or my capture card. But anyway, I have to use a robot to push the button, and I did. And wow, I can get really far away from that robot, huh? Okay, we're gonna release it. Um, so there's a machine that dispenses the spider drone. I'd use the spider drone to step on the button to send my guy across. Uh, press Y to pick up a newspaper. Let's press the start button. Let's press this button to open. There we go. The Atomic City Gazette. Genius or fool? Alexander von Felix, president of Nucleonics, plans to build a floating metropolis. Uh, and then there's a, a section on the right-hand side there that says the edge of collapse. Uh, let's zoom in on that. Uh, research by renowned scientists warns of the dangers of communism. And then on the right hand side, there's an article that says best friend multitron something something. I can't quite tell what that says. Clearly, we're not meant to read it because it's very small. Let's unzoom out here and press A. Okay. Um, let's go through the next door. Uh, anyway, yeah, I was saying this is much more action than I expected. I thought this was going to be like a. Uh, maybe like a uh, Monkey Island type adventure game of just like, um, you know, picking up clues and putting things together. But no, this is this is much more, I mean, dare I say, in the vein of, of a Zelda. Um, you know, going around, some combat, some puzzles. Oh, a little spider robot just went through some pipes and then stepped on an electrified platform and exploded itself. But I'm going to take over the next, ow. I'm gonna take over the next little spider platform. Oh wait, it took over a Gumtron, the, the dispenser. Capable of building new Bugtrons, this clumsy machine is designed to ensure that critical areas have at least one active Bugtron to perform necessary maintenance. Following a number of incidents, some units were renovated and rearmed, making them virtually invulnerable. But that's not who I wanna control. I wanna control the Bugtron. No. Okay, how do I pick who I control? Hold L, select a target by pressing R. Oh, I see. When I press R, it switches. Okay, there we go. Now I've got control of the Bugtron, and I'm going to guide him through that same pipe we saw the other one go through. And then there's some electrified four panels over here with a button past them, but I'm going to navigate him around those electrified panels. So he pushes the button and turns off the electrified floor. Oh, it didn't turn off the electrified floor. It... What did it do? It did something back where we started in this room. Oh, it made a Buzztron uh, show up. So we're going to take over the Buzztron, who can then hover over this electrified floor, push the button on the uh, machine, supplying the electricity to the electrified floor, and that will then uh, cause the electrified floor to turn off. And I can get through and break open some boxes and go into the next room. I'm at 333 of those little gears. There's another dispenser machine, so there's a spider bot. We're gonna kill him real quick. Oh, I'm only at 40 health. Can I like just farm spiders to heal up? Now oh, that one didn't heal me. Okay, let's take over the next one that comes out. I'm gonna stand on a moving platform. We'll position the spider friend on the button. And we'll step across to where there's another spider friend. Uh, and there is some force field looking things here, so we're going to spend send the spider friend through a tunnel and see if we can find a way for him to... Hmm. I don't see a way for him to turn off the force field out here. There's a lever, but I assume he can't pull a lever. He's just a little spider friend. Um, there's a button he could stand on that would activate a... Uh, oops, I sent him too far away. We'll wait for another one to dispense here. I'm gonna try and walk through this force field. Oh, I can walk through that force field just fine. Ah, I bet the spider friend can't walk through this force field. Is that what we're gonna find out? Oh, my remote control can't go through the force field. Ow, okay, I acted, yeah, okay, the spider friend can't go through the force field either. So what I'm gonna need to do is Press the button to send a moving platform over there, but I can't do that. If I go through the force field, it's gonna break my connection to the spider friend, right? Yes, okay. So we need to send, oh, dang it, I keep activating the um, the uh, dispenser with my remote control. Okay, we'll send him through a tunnel, and then we're gonna go through the force field and push a button to send a platform over to where he's gonna be, and then I'm going to...
take over him. There we go. So I'm going to send the platform to him. He's going to step onto the platform. I'm going to step off the button. He's going to step off the platform. I'm going to step on the platform. And then he steps on the button for me. Thank you, spider friend. And then we'll flip a switch. That will make that platform move automatically, I think. So I can get back and forth without needing him in the future. I'm definitely noticing some slowdown issues here. I hope that it's my computer. I think it's there's a good chance it's my computer. Ah, oh, guess what? There's a door that needs two buttons pressed in order to open it, and I didn't bring my spider friend with me like a jerk. Let's take over spider friend. Get back on that. Oh, I did. I was moving the wrong stick to move the wrong guy. I like this mechanic of, of taking over the other robots and using, like, two sticks to steer you and and the little the spider friends. That's cool. All right, so I'm going to stand on one button and send him to stand on another button, and that opens up the door, and I can go through it and leave my spider friend behind. Okay, let's break open some jars. I mean... Can canisters or something? They're jars. If I'm thinking of this as a Zelda-ish game, then they're definitely jars. Um, okay, we're in a computer lab here. There's a, a bionic man on a table. There's a thing with an arrow on it over in the corner. We're going to press Y next to that. Uh, Nucleonics cores. You can use cores to craft and upgrade skill modules at Craftronic machines. Okay, where's a Craftronic machine? Is there one in here? Because I have a core. Oh, down at the bottom now, I've got a bunch of information that disappeared, so I can't tell you what all it said, but it looked like there were upgrades for different abilities. Um, that's that's what it looked like. Okay, through another door. I picked up some health at some point. I'm at 70 health now. Okay, I see a tunnel that will probably send a spider friend through. And... Not much else. There's a door here, but it doesn't open. So we'll go across this bridge, overlooking a terrifying abyss inside of this factory. There's like a big robot down there, like Iron Giant style robot. Oh my gosh, there's one up close. That That is a sentinel. That is just absolutely a sentinel from the X-Men comics. Look how big that guy is. Like my little robot could probably fit inside of its eye twice. That's how big this thing is. Okay. Fortunately, it looks like it's probably under construction or maintenance or something, and I definitely won't have to fight it at any point. Oh, a dispenser dropped down, and, um, whoa, okay, this guy shoots lasers. This is a nucleo Nucleonics Turretron, serial number TR-500. This machine was a security device used to prevent intruders from breaking into restricted areas. Although not mobile, its projectiles are able to neutralize invaders from a distance. Uh, okay, I think this one is under my control now, which is good, because I can have it try and spit out. Ah, oh, I just shot myself with it. So, I, I think I'm aiming it like a, um... Oh, I can, I can just hold the right... No? So, every shot, it, like, closes and opens again, and I aim it like a twin-stick shooter just with my right stick. That's weird. Um, I'm just gonna blow it up. I killed myself when I blew it up. How did that happen? I'm not sure. Okay, let's go try that again. At full health, 386 gears. Run past the Sentinel workshop. Run past the big old Sentinel. Hi, big old Sentinel. Looks like his arms aren't attached. I feel better about him knowing his arms aren't attached. All right, here we go. Fight time. I'm gonna try and take out this Turtron right away. Ow, he shot me. Okay, one's down. There's one left, one Turtron left. We'll see if we can... Nope. Why, why would I have wanted to take over the Spider-Tron. Come on, game. Obviously, I want to be the Turretron. And then, ow, I shot myself with the Turretron. I'm using the Turretron to shoot the Dispensertron. That's fun. Meanwhile, it's getting attacked by spiders, but that's fine. I'm just standing off in the distance. Oh, no, wait. Oh. Oh, 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 friends. 
I think that I have a symbiotic relationship with whatever creature I take remote control of, such that when that creature or, or robot takes damage, my character too takes damage. I think I think that's what's happening, which is cool but also unfortunate. Okay. Ooh, there's some stair down here in in the shadows. Let's go down them. There's a spider Tron here and a dispenser machine. Nothing else to do down there. So we'll go back up the stairs and go down to our right. Ooh. More stuff to break up here. And then down below, it looks like there's a several spider Trons. This room has a little tunnel a spider Tron could go into. So before we go fight those bunch of spider Trons, let's go grab the one. There he is. Hello, my friend. And you're going to come in here with me go through a nifty tunnel I found. Come on, Spider-Tron. Yeah. I think it's actually called a Bugatron, isn't it? Anyway, he went through and there's a button. And he pushes the button and it uh, brought up something in the midst of where all those other enemies were that I was talking about. So we'll go down there and find out what it was. It's a red glowy thing. And there's... Oh, I'm at 10 health. I'm dead. I'm dead. So this room has, when we get back to it, two Buzzatrons and several Spidertrons and uh, the big red glowy thing that we make appear out of the floor by having the Spidertron push the button. Do we think the big red glowy thing is some sort of explosive that I can use the Spidertron to uh, blow up, thereby eliminating all those foes at once? We're going to find out, because this time, instead of letting my Spidertron go, I'm going to send him down there, all on his own, to try to be like a covert spy sabotage person. Okay, here goes the Spidertron down the stairs. No one be alarmed, I'm just a friendly Spidertron. I'm fine. Attack this core thingy. Yeah, it started glowing, and, and then it exploded, and it killed a bunch of them. And I did take some damage when my Spidertron got hit. Um, so that's that's how that works is when you when you take over an enemy you then share health with them temporarily like they, they have their own health but when they take damage you take damage which is a cool concept especially because you can send them in to be secret spies for you like that i really like this game um let's see ah oh, there's a elevator here we'll take this it looks like we're going down 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 and here's another door And there's another dispenser here, another spot to set a spider tron, so we'll take over the spider tron and send him up through this tunnel. Ba -ba -ba. And on the other side, there's some electrocuted floor oh, floor plating. That I stepped on like a dummy. Okay. New spider friend. Put him through the tunnel. Avoid the floor this time. And through another spider tunnel to push a button, which. Ah! Ah, ah, ah! Pushing that button allows one of the Buzzatrons that I can take over to escape, and then he can go over an electrified floor to attack the thing that is causing all the electrified floors in the first place, and then I can go down and around and get through. Cool. And there's a button. Oh, okay, I'm standing on one of the moving platforms, but I've got to take over a Spider-Tron and send him to go stand on the button in order to activate this moving platform. And then there's a spider tunnel. We'll go in there. And... Oh, that just goes back out here to where there's a another Spider-Tron, which I'll have him destroy out of malice. Um, okay, you can stay there for now. In this next area, oh, nope, I need that, I need that Spider-Tron back. Um, because there's a Laser-Tron here. It was developed as an upgrade to the Turtron. This machine can fire laser beams in any direction and then, or in any direction that then rotate, creaking, ugh. This machine can fire laser beams in any direction that then rotate, creating an insurmountable obstacle. In addition to this attack, it's also capable of firing a powerful laser beam directly at an invader's position. Okay. So. 
now that I have control of it, I can cause it to shoot a specific thing, but there's nothing I need it to shoot because I need to go take over a Bugatron and send him to go step on a button over by the Lasertron, which I'm hoping is going to deactivate all this electrified flooring. Uh, it did not. I'm not sure what pressing on that button did, actually. So we'll go through a spider hole here, see if there's anything interesting on the other side. Um, no? Oh, I see. It lowered some pylons, and now I can run around the electrified flooring, avoiding the shots. Ow! I got hit once by the laser tron from a distance. And now the spider tron can go through another tunnel, and there's a green orb thing? I don't know what that does. Um, there's another laser tron here, but there's a button I can get to if I just avoid it as it sweeps, which will lower a different set of pylons. Oh, I've got to keep them lowered for my spider tron to get through. Go, spider tron, go. Okay, spider tron's through. Now I've got to make my little robot avoid getting hit because up ahead there is another two set of buttons to open a door. We made it. Good job, spider friend. Through the door I go. There's a piece of paper here. Let's pick it up and take a look. It's a portrait of a man. Um, it says, so in the corner it showed a picture of a man, but then in my files I have a thing that says number 89, service order. Nucleon technologies, product service and repair, uh, a multi-tron, multi-articulated housekeeping machine. Issues reported, unit exhibits unexpected behavior, occasionally does not obey basic commands, unit Often tries to leave the home. Unit throws food at visitors. Ooh. Apparently its central fusatronic module is corrupted. Um, it has been deactivated and recycled, and a refund was sent to Miss Rosenbaum. Um, and... Ooh. Problem found in other units. Contact engineering. Urgent. Cool. All right. So then it looks like I have a section over here that says images... How do I navigate this section? Back. Back. I can't tell what I'm navigating here. Okay, let's try this again. So we've got maps. We don't have any maps yet. Database. Here we go. I can go to images. And under images, the only image I have... Oops. Database. Images. A is confirm. And it takes me out of there. Weird. Because there's two pages for images, but I don't know how to... Oh, B is confirm. I'm sorry, that's why. So I only have the one image, which is that newspaper. Okay. Back. Machines. And it's got little pixel art versions of all the machines I've identified. The Bugtron, the Gumtron, the Lasertron, the Pogatron, the Turretron. Cool. There's a whole lot more that I have not identified yet. Characters is... All question marks. Nothing in characters yet. Okay. Neat. Oh, this game's cool, guys. I, I'm really delighted by it. Here's that repair symbol again. Uh, Nucleonics, is your robot on the fritz? Always have your Nucleonics repair kit ready. Press X to use a repair kit. Okay. So I picked that up, and now I... Oh, I see it shows up under my health. I have a little repair kit that I can use. But I'm not gonna, because I'm gonna step ahead where... Oh my gosh! What, what do you know it? I think it's the Cleanatron. Let's see if we can, uh, well, I took over a Bugatron. We'll try and have the Bugatron attack it, and then we'll take over the Cleanatron. Okay. Let's pick. I can't, I can't take over the Cleanatron. Oh, no. I'm not surprised at that. Haha, <laughs> I made my Spiderbot attack it. Ow, I got hit. Okay. Um, I don't remember what the button to use the heal kit was, but I'm probably prob probably probably going to die because I'm at 30 health. Is it X? Yeah, X. All right, I'm at 95 health now. We got this. So this this robot has like four arms, and it's just it's swinging them around. It's bashing them into the ground, and it's it's skating around. It's got three wheels under it, like it's some kind of office chair, but then four Doctor Octopus arms that it's swinging around. And uh, it sends them out, and I can get up close to it and bash it in the face while its arms are off in the distance. I'm down to 43 health again. It's down, I would say, about half health. 
I gotta remember I've got a dodge I can use. Alright, there, put all its arms out, which means I can get up there and get close and bash it real good a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, I'm down to 33 health. There's also... Ow! I'm down to 12 health. Okay. Not great. Okay. There's also a Dispensatron in here spitting out spider bots at me, so I'm trying to kill it before it kills me. Oh my gosh, it still has health left? I thought I got it. Whoo, I blew it up. Okay. Now I just gotta deal with the spider bots. Dispensatron, stop spitting out robots. Oh, this one's not invincible. Okay, I blew up the Dispensatron. I'm at 42 health. And they're all... Everything's dead. Everything's dead. Is there a door I can go through? Oh, there it is. Okay. Pick up another one of those health packs. And... Ooh, a health upgrade. Press Y to pick that up. Uh, this is another core. You can use cores to craft and upgrade skill modules at Craftronic Machine. So I need to find a Craftronic Machine. Um, did I just beat the first dungeon? It feels like a dungeon. Um, I picked up a... Uh, a file here that says warning stories death's planet a terrible machine the fusatron a multi-articulated war machine built to tear simultaneously chaos sets in throughout the city what will be left and that's that's the thing that i just fought um and now we're stepping up a little further and there's a big tank thing here i'm looking at it analyzing object identified fixed spot cabin inoperable oh it got ran into by a tank robot Updating map of area. Complete. And now it's like a painting of the scene here that I was looking at. And my robot's looking, oh, over to the left, there's like a, a Disneyland style painted map showing the Central Station, the Serendipity Mountain, and the Atomic City, and the Marine Nation. So, uh, oh, and Nucleonics. So it looks like that's um, gonna be where our adventure takes us in Retro Machina. Um, a fun little isometric Zelda-ish game. Location of operational fixed spot cabin added to map. Main routine, so reach Serendipity Mountain. Um, yeah. Uh, this game's adorable. Um, I, I am pro this. I think this is definitely one y'all should take a look at. Uh, I know I, I talk about Zelda games on my channel a lot, and this definitely um, scratches a similar itch, uh, but with a super cool hand-painted uh, um, art deco retro futuristic style. I like it a lot. Uh, I'm gonna keep playing this one on my own time. Uh, we'll probably review it over on Geek2Geek Geek Media once I've finished it, um, so keep an eye on that. Uh, thank you again to Super.com for providing a copy of this for me to check out. And until next time, friends, tap A and hope for the best. If you enjoyed my show, it would mean a lot if you would rate and review it on iTunes, share it on social media, or check out my Patreon. You can find all of my stuff at troidalpower.carrd.co. This has been a presentation of the We Can Make This Work Probably Network. Follow us on Twitter at ProbablyWork for more of our questionable content. Also, we have a website called ProbablyWork.com.